Hime Arikawa is courted by two despicable men, all while wearing a maid costume. These two goons are loan sharks, one with a scar and the other with sunglasses. According to Mr. Shades, the only way Hime can pay them is to sell his body. Yes. His. But Mr. Scar asked Mr. Shades to slow down a bit. Why not have a little fun with Hime before they sell him off? Excuse me? Mr. Shades thinks he's sus for wanting to hold the boy. But FYI, Mr. Shades, Mr. Scar is more riled up because Hime's a guy. CPS, hello? As Mr. Scar is about to embrace poor Hime fully, three girls in school uniforms help them. They are 18, yes, that's her name, Unko and Albertina II, collectively known as the Student Council of Shimoshina High School. They are here to rescue Hime from these vile, vile men before Mr. Shades can protest. A Teen immediately hits him with <gasps> her roll of bills attack. Oh no, not the utility bills. Meanwhile, Unko breaks Mr. Scar's neck with her special kick. As for Albertina the second, she only has to stare at them, an ominous aura radiating off her for them to fall. And so the two scurry away like men who run away from their responsibilities. The girls ask Hime if he's okay, and he thanks them with the cutest expression. You see, the student council has a big Big thing for cute girls. Beauties are quickly inducted to their council, and Hime passed with full marks. However, Hime bursts their bubble and reveals he's a guy. The three girls can't believe what he's saying, so 18 has to check if he really has the devil's horn. Without warning, she lifts his skirt and lo! You already know what they saw. Mm -hmm. They're still in disbelief and feel like they've lost as a girl. Why does he have to be so pretty? And most importantly, why is he wearing a maid costume. Hime explains the two goons from earlier made him wear this because they were about to sell him to creepier men. It all started when his parents traveled overseas and had new debts everywhere. Worse, they put those under Hime's name. That's why loan sharks are after him. Wow, what awful parents. After hearing his explanation, the three are unimpressed. They can easily solve his problem. In fact, they already have 1 million yen to pay for everything. But of course, there's a catch. Hime Hime has to spend the rest of his high school life dressed as a girl and be their dog. Uh, well, what choice does he have? Choosing the lesser evil is the best option, right? And so, during the ceremony, President Unko, VP18, and Secretary Albertina II introduced to everyone their newest pet, Hime Arikawa. Not to mention, he's a trap. Everyone soon knows his real identity as Albertina II flips his skirt for all to see. And that's that's how the student council uses its power to get and do what they want. As soon as Hime gets home, Kaguya, his younger sibling, pounces on him and expresses her excitement. She can't believe the student council scouted her brother. He's so cute in that outfit. But Hime takes it off immediately and shows his annoyance towards the Burv student council officers. However, unlike him, Kaguya is happy that Hime is finally one of them. She rubs herself into Hime's thighs while only wearing a towel. Hime screams in discomfort. But Kaguya won't stop because she feels there's nothing wrong with what she's doing. Besides, they're brothers. Wait, wait, what? He he's a boy too? What the hell? Hime starts to question how they ended up becoming rare things. Well, we want to know too. We want to know what your parents look like. Are they traps themselves? Like the mom looks more like a guy and the dad looks more like a girl? Is that what's going on? The next day, Tadokoro, Hime's best friend, teases him for dressing like a girl. It's like middle school when their classmates traumatized Hime by forcing him to wear a girl's uniform. Overdoing it, guys. Despite Hime's uneasiness, Tadako confirms he'd go for him. Okay. Uh, Tadokoro can't simply leave his best friend alone and dares to check if Hime is hiding melons under his blouse. Not a fan of shameless actions, Unko suddenly kicks the living lights out of Tadokoro. Thank you. And 18 reprimands him, while Albertina II clarifies Hime is their personal toy or dog. Deaf to their warnings, Tadokoro immediately holds 18's hand, trying to woo her with his charm and asking her for tea after class. But 18 isn't that kind of girl, and she slaps 
traps this hot guy with her infamous Bill Rolls attack. To be clear, if he wants to date her, he must cross-dress as a girl first. In that case, Tadakoro needs to learn how to put jug support from Hime. However, Hime is not even wearing any of those. Yet, Albertina II has one thing for sure. Hime still wears those striped unmentionables. 18 thinks he's a perv and Trembly hugs him. Quite ironic, isn't it? From one corner, Kaguya infuriatingly stares at 18 out of jealousy. On the other side, Oda Mitsunaga from the discipline committee peers at the student council's misbehavior. Both look at each other, making Oda wonder who this weird girl is. I'm the student council's enemy, Kaguya quickly blurts, skipping a lot of details. Luckily, number one, Kaguya's friend, explains his relationship with Hime. What's with this anime naming their character with numbers? Anyway, Hiro, Oda's maid, quickly assumes Kaguya is also a student council victim. In that case, Oda is confident she found an ally that will help her overthrow the student council. Upon hearing that, Kaguya instantly agrees and drags Oda to tell Hime he will save them from his oppressors. After snarling at them, they quickly run away. The council wonders who that little girl is. Well, it's not much of a surprise when Hime reveals it's his younger brother. Birds of the same feather flock together indeed. Do you know why? Because Oda, also known as Mita, is also a cross-dressing boy. One day in the student council office, 18 announces they have some customary monthly orders from the chairman, aka her father. Yep, that's why she's super rich. Also why the council can do whatever they want without repercussions. Anyway, they owe her papa the responsibility to carry out the task of helping out other clubs, starting with the cheer squad. And what better way to boost their morale if they won't dress up like them? And by dressing up, they mean Hime in a female cheerleader costume and the three of them in male outfits. Well, Hime can't complain because the male cheer squad seems pretty pumped up with his cuteness. And so the boys teach Hime how to cheer properly. They guide him in lifting his arms, exposing his armpits. Aizen immediately interferes, saying it's unclean and pisses her off for some reason. Her name really suits this anime, huh? Anyway, Mr. Cheerleader asks to see what Hime has learned so far, and so he executes the routine the best way he can. But he still has some mistakes. Flustered by his inaccuracy, he apologizes with googly puppy eyes and red cheeks. Stop, why is he adorable? Next is the volleyball team, who are falling behind in their score against another school. Since it's Hima's job to cheer them on, 18 calls on him to do his thing. However, he slips accidentally, revealing his precious jewels. Everyone sees it, and the men cheer for the unexpected fan service. The team gets so hyped, they're able to win the game. The team celebrates by carrying Hime and throwing him in the air. Bro, I no longer know how to feel about this. Congratulations, I guess. After that, the student council goes to the photography club, where they offer Hime as their tribute without his knowledge. He'll be their model wearing these cute female costumes hand-picked by his superiors. He poses as a nurse, a playboy bunny, and a PE student. Um, is this school related? Hello, is this child welfare? I need to report something. What? Oh, sorry. The photographers want to see more skin, but 18 instantly stops them from doing the more unholy. However, Hime's agony doesn't stop there, as the council seizes the opportunity to enhance Hime's pictures. The not-so-innocent shots turn into more sinful photos, making it look like a male milkshake splashed on Hime's face. Uh, again, borderline age. Hime pleads with them to dispose of these embarrassing photos, but the girls refuse because he looks cute in them. He begs to disagree and clarifies he's still a boy. Oh, yes, dear, but they clearly don't care. The day continues and the council goes to help the art club. Two cute underclassmen are so happy to have Hime around. He's wondering what they're up to, but wait no more as they're very straightforward with their intentions. Without asking him first, they strip Hime's blouse as he will be their nude model. Fear not because only the top half will be exposed. Hime feels the council's cross-dressing fantasy has infected the school like a virus, but he can't refuse as he owes them a lot. So just this once, okay? And so, 
The art club patiently draws Hime. However, Albertina II isn't pleased with their work. She yells that their sketches aren't good enough and should seize the opportunity to highlight Hime's good points. Like an expert in the arts, Albertina II shows them how to do it properly. After a few minutes of sketching, she shows her masterpiece, Hime in Eromanga. What a surprise. Looking at her drawing, the two upperclassmen quickly figure out who she is. Albertina II, Sensei. Can we have your autograph? They scream in unison. Huh? Sensei? Autograph? Hime is oblivious to what's the big deal with her. Well, ladies and gentlemen, she may be a perv, but Albertina II is a super popular manga artist. The art club can attest to that, as they are her biggest fan. In fact, she already has five titles in serialization. Hmm. Okay. Hime wonders what magazine she draws for. Believe it or not, she sketches for Yuri Hime. Realizing that, Hime can't help but be excited as well. After a few long moments in the art club, they finish their task. While walking in the hallway, Unko shows Albertina II's latest manga series in the magazine. The main character terrifyingly looks like Hime. Also, the title says, Magical Boy Hime Kith. Wow, what a coincidence. Annoyed by Hime's displeasure, Albertina shakes her alien stuff to Magyorbosan and yells at him for refusing to admit he loves being in an Ero manga. Okay, now calm down, dear. He is sensitive to that. That's why he's sucking in the corner right now. 18 asks Albertina II not to be so mean to Hime, but Albertina II refuses to admit her rudeness and blames Magyorbo for speaking such hurtful words. Pondering that, 18 teases that if it's really Magyorbosan's fault, he should have said, You perv, it feels good to be used by 18 san all the time. Please use me more. Okay. Hime can't believe these girls are all the same. They even get worse every day. Alone at last. Hime is so tired but thankful to understand Albertina II a bit more today. He feels better understanding his senpai more. Not until Magyorbo-san pops out of nowhere and calls him a perv crossdresser that doesn't know how to perk that thing under her skirt to pose for art. Luckily, Albertina II calms him down. It's another day in the office when 18 quickly notices that their cross-dressing pet doesn't look fine. Apparently, Hime only got 35 over 100 in their exam. As if trying to feel better, he asks them how their grades are. Instead of finding allies to his misfortune, he feels more stupid after finding out how well they are in class. 18 ranks second, Albertina II is fifth, and Unko is number one. Yes, someone who reads about the mysteries of poop achieves the first rank among their batch. Since they're the prodigies of this school, they feel responsible for tutoring Hime. So now, they'll start with health and physical education. However, Hime thinks that subject isn't that significant. If so, could he explain his score of 4 out of 100 on his recent exam? Oopsie. Hime stutters, trying to make an excuse, but it's no use as the evidence is too strong. According to Albertina II, health and physical education teach a lot about the mysteries of life. 18 agrees to that, as they learn about how to make babies in this subject. Ah yes, a genetically manipulated cabbage field produces babies. Or better yet, storks bring down hotties to make them. Mm -hmm. Upon hearing those, Hime wonders how they rank the highest in their grade. Are they truly capable of teaching him the right stuff? Yes especially if the topic is the mysteries of the cross-dressing boy. Oh, uh, here we go again. According to 18 Sunset, it's easy to wear a girl's clothes, but if Hima's going to do it, he has to give his all. For example, he shouldn't make it obvious if he's wearing a wig. Second, the unmentionables. If possible, they like him to wear the riskiest thing ever. Completely normal stuff, right? Albertina II reprimands 18 and clarifies they don't mean to hear her preferences. Like an angel sent from the heavens to save him from despair, Hime silently thanks her interference. But to his dismay, Albertina II continues the subject and boldly claims she likes those tiny things white. No stripes, just white. However, Unko believes it should be G-strings all the way. Despite how absurd this may sound, all three agree Hime shall wear a white G-string from now on. <sighs> Christ, Hime only wants to study. What's with the sudden decision of what he should put on? 18 
looks at him and comments on how boring his request is. But if he wears what they want, they'll gladly teach him. <laughs> nope, not a chance. Still, they try to teach him by knowing first how horrible he is at the subject. They made him answer a math exam wherein he only get 6 out of 10. Learning Hime's weak points, Unko patiently teaches him the formulas and the easiest way to solve the problems. Whoa, she's actually teaching him. What a breath of fresh air. Unko may look dumb, but she's definitely smart. However, 18 ruins the moment by asking him to take off 4 things from his body because he made 4 mistakes. According to her, studying is more effective if you use your body. He <laughs> oh boy. Despite his protest, the girls quickly remove 4 garments from him, including Mr. Stripes, and make him realize the consequences. Now for the history question, who built Azuchi Castle? Like an idiot, he may answer it's Oda, Oda Mitsunaga. And wrong! Like an animal in heat, 18 swiftly undresses Hime. She goes all out. Yes, pun intended. The editors can just put clouds where they should be. One fine weekend, people line up to get an autograph in their new volumes of Albertina II's manga. They task Hime to sign all the issues since he's the front cover. What's more exciting for Albertina II is that no one knows Hime's real gender. In just a few hours, all the books are sold out. Finally, they can go outside and dress up Hime like Sailor Moon's long-lost sister. In an instant, boys line up to take pictures of him, asking him to pose and smile. The others offer prefer taking indecent low-angle shots, making Hime uncomfortable. Imagine if these boys find out the truth. Yeah. Well, that didn't take long as 18 handed out Hime's business cards. In bold letters, it says, Cross-dressing male cosplayer. The photographer quivers as he realizes Hime's gender. 18 thinks she destroyed his hope, but to her surprise, he's so into it. Suddenly, Oda appears and scolds them for organizing an out-of-school activity. Kaguya is with her too and is furious that they violated his brother too much. However, they create an even worse scenario instead of making things right as the crowd simps for their cosplay. Oda clarifies to everyone they're not here to cosplay. Well, except for Hido in her maid outfit. But, oh, how can she explain this? Even Kaguya Kaguya isn't on her side as he encourages the boys to take cute pictures of him. Making matters worse, embarrassing for Hime, Kaguya asks him if they can take a picture together. Unko pushes Oda so they can give the best fan service. Since they can't do anything, they just let things happen. After a few hours of their photo sessions, the council and the discipline committee dine in a family restaurant. Hime feels exhausted from all the signing and posing and swears never to cosplay again. He was also scared the whole time they'd figure out he was a cross-dresser. Despite his bumbling, 18 stolen photos of him say otherwise. Hume definitely looks like he's having fun with that bright smile. 18 thinks he's amazing for making everyone happy. Hume blushes at that and denies that 18's praises are flattering. Still, 18 hugs him tightly. It may be a strange world for Hime Arakawa, but he does his best to cope with it, especially with his newfound friends or tormentors. Well, he can deny all he wants, but deep inside, Hime knows he's starting to like his cross-dresser personality. No matter what he does, he'll always be their little princess. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.